and I'll also press the live transcript button. Brilliant. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us at this Let's Talk Enfield Town uh, webinar. My name's Oliver Deed. Uh, I'm joining uh, this, uh, this morning, should I say, um, as the uh, chair for this particular session. Um, I run a community engagement consultancy called ECF, and we've been working with Enfield Council on the Let's Talk Enfield Town project for the last couple of years. Uh, just before we get into the proceedings uh, this, uh, this morning, I will get that right at some point. Um, the meeting is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the Let's Talk Enfield Town website uh, on Monday or shortly afterwards. Uh, we will be taking questions today. They'll be taken after the presentations have finished. Um, so you can submit your questions using the Q&A function or by raising your hand, whichever you prefer. Um, if you do raise your hand during the session, I will call on you uh, at the uh, end of the presentations to ask your question. I'll allow you to unmute and then uh, ask your question of the project team. I'll just quickly run through the uh, agenda this morning. We'll do about 10 minutes of uh, introduction. That will be followed by uh, a short presentation from me on the uh, previous uh, round of engagement that we've undertaken on the Let's Talk Enfield Town project. Then we'll move into 25, 30 minutes worth of presentation on the emerging public spaces proposal, which is going to be delivered by Tim South. Uh, then Richard Eason will talk very quickly about uh, the next steps for the project, and then we'll move into a Q&A. And I appreciate it's a Saturday, so we're aiming to wrap up uh, at around about 25 uh, past 11. Um, so I'm going to hand over to members of the team to introduce themselves because we've got a panel of five today. Um, so first, Magda, do you want to introduce yourself and what your role is on the project? Thank you, Oli. Hi, I'm Agnieszka Jezierska and I'm the project manager. Uh, brilliant. Next on my list is Tim South. Thanks, Oli. Um, I'm Tim South from uh, LDA Design and Principal Landscape Architect working on the project. And Richard? Thanks, Holly. Good morning, everyone. My name's uh, Richard Easton. I'm the uh, Healthy Streets Programme Director. So this project, along with a number of others, um, fall uh, into my portfolio. And last but not least, Liz Rhodes. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. My name's Liz Rhodes. I'm the Healthy Streets Public Relations Manager. Brilliant. OK, well, we'll move into the first part of the session uh, this afternoon, uh, this, this morning, sorry, I will get there. It's early in the morning on a Saturday for this. Um, so um, over, over, the, uh, over the past couple of years, uh, as I said, um, we've been working with Enfield Council on the uh, Let's Talk Enfield Town uh, project um, over the course of, um, yeah, the last couple of years. And um, Richard, I'll just bring you in very quickly, if that's okay, just to give a very brief overview of uh, the Let's Talk Enfield Town project, just a couple of sentences to provide some context for our, for our participants today. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, I mean, um, Enfield Town, the Enfield Town, Let's Talk Enfield Town Liverpool Neighbourhood project is an exciting one, I think. It's uh, an ambitious one. And what we're really looking at doing is um, is redesigning um, the town centre. So improving the look and feel, um, improving the accessibility, making sure that people can arrive at the town centre through a range of different sort of healthy and sustainable ways. Um, and then when they get to the town centre, um, it'd be a sort of nice place, uh, a, a nicer place to be um, and in, with the improved public realm uh, so that more people come and they stay longer and, and they spend more. Uh, a greener place, uh, a more pedestrian friendly place so really taking some designs forward with with people at the heart of of the design uh, in the town center that at the moment can be often quite sort of dominated with um with motor traffic so we will really want to make some significant changes um and it's great that we we're, we're having so much participation in, in the development of the designs as as part of that brilliant thanks richard and that gave me an opportunity to uh, steal myself and take take some coffee on board this morning um so moving to um, the engagement findings for uh, the last couple of phases of the, the Let's Talk Enfield Town project, just to, just to quickly recap, uh, I can I recognise some of the names on the uh, session today because you participated in the first phase of engagement on the Let's Talk Enfield Town project, which took place between September 2019 and November 2019. And that was in the, the pre-COVID world when we were able to do 
a whole series of physical events. We did 23 events in total, including a series of community workshops, pop-up sessions in and around Enfield Town, school visits. We did workshops with um, student councils, um, and we met with various different stakeholder and representative groups in and around Enfield Town. We also uh, established the Enfield Town Consultative Group, which is comprised of a number of different residents associations and interest groups in and around uh, Enfield Town who have met uh, several times over the last couple of years um, to examine various different um, uh, bits and pieces uh, around the Let's Talk Enfield Town project. And that's been a really useful forum uh, through which people can participate. And in the first phase of engagement, we had around 3,100 people uh, engaged in some way, shape or form, whether that was by downloading a, a particular document on the website, uh, attending a pop-up, uh, completing a survey. There were several different mechanisms through which people participated in the process. Then after, after a period of time, we produced a report on uh, the phase one of the engagement, which is still hosted on the uh, Enfield Town website. What we did uh, was we outlined the five design principles that you can see um, on, on the screen on the right hand side. Currently, hopefully these are, are familiar to people, but we've set these up really as the, as the five design principles by which to test all of the different proposals that come forward so that residents can, can rate effectively whether the proposals meet these uh, design principles uh, moving forwards. Then we moved into uh, phase two. So obviously COVID hit and uh, we were we were unable to, to do the physical events that, that we might like to have done. Um, and, and this process ran between October 2020 and November 2020 um, and effectively had two constituent parts. We had a, a consultation on the proposed plan for Enfield Town, which you can see uh, on the right hand side, which included a whole series of measures, including uh, the introduction of a 20 part mile per hour limit across uh, Enfield Town. Uh, and then we also conducted a, a co-design process for four public spaces, which Tim is going to talk to in, in detail. Uh, they are Fountain Island, Enfield Town Station uh, Plaza, the Library Green uh, and Town Park Entrance, Sadler's Mill, um, Sadler's Mill Square. Um, and actually around 3,700 people engaged in this process in some way, shape or form, and over 1,500 people uh, downloaded uh, the plan. Uh, so just moving um, into the approach that we took during phase two, as I said previously, it was digitally led, COVID-19 compliant. We did three presentations in this sort of format uh, to talk people through the proposed plans. And those webinar sessions are still available on uh, the Let's Talk Enfield Town website. We did four uh, individual co-design workshop sessions where people came together to give us our, their ideas on the different spaces that were within the scope of the engagement. We also updated the Engagement HQ website, which most of you would have viewed. You would have registered for today's session through that particular platform, and that acted effectively as the source of truth on the project so you could find out all the information that, that was required. We had several stakeholder uh, meetings as, uh, uh, as part of the process, including uh, meetings with uh, the likes of the Enfield branch of the National Autistic Society um, and also the Enfield branch, or, sorry, the uh, London branch of the National um, Federation of the Blind UK. Um, and then we had a meeting of the uh, Enfield Town Consultative Group, and that was all supplemented by a series of mail shots that went out into uh, the local area. And this this screen, and this is from, taken directly from the report, which you can view on the Let's Talk Enfield Town website, uh, basically summarises the, the events and the participation that we had. And what I really wanted to show was some of the, um, this is this is a program called Google Jamboards that we use for the co-design workshops where people were able to submit their ideas. We had digital post-it notes and effectively we had a blank uh, plan of a space and we asked people to submit their ideas for what they would like to see moving forwards. This is Enfield Town Station Plaza. So that's the area outside of Enfield Town Station. And you can see um, from this particular Jamboards, Lots of talk of greenery, talk of a uh, heritage trail. Lots of really good ideas were received. This is uh, a jam board from the Sadler's Mill Square um, uh, workshop, which Tom, uh, which Tim's going to talk to in a little bit more detail. Lots of really, really good ideas were received uh, for this particular space. This is a, a good version of a particularly busy uh, jam board. Um, 
So we also ran a, a survey on the proposed plan and uh, that was a mechanism by which we asked people for their details. We had about 234 people respond to uh, the survey and what I've done is sort of given a bit of a breakdown in terms of uh, the demographics of people that, that participated and you can see on the right hand side the sort of split in terms of uh, age bracket and what we've done in the report is compared that to um, the profile of the, the, the wards within which uh, Enfield Town sits uh, locally so please feel free to read that at your leisure. One of the things we also did uh, going back to something that I said earlier uh, was tested the uh, design principles um, against, uh, so tested uh, the proposals against the design principles that have been established by the community. And what you can see on this uh, particular table is that there was a spread of opinion in terms of um, whether the proposals delivered on what had been set out by the community previously. So certainly in terms of the design principle around offering transport choice, there was a recognition that people agreed or strongly agreed that, that this delivered on this particular um, element that had been um, part of the phase one of the engagement. Um, but actually, in terms of the vibrancy of the economy, there was much more uncertainty, much more strongly disagree, disagree that, that these plans delivered on that particular uh, design principle. And I know the council are, are taking that away to um, examine uh, moving forwards. And then on the right hand side, you can also see we tested some of the individual um, uh, proposals that were contained within the plan itself to find out what people thought of those and I, I put the one in around introducing a series of facilities to enable safer cycling through the town centre and creating connections with other cycle routes uh, and there was a balance of views on this I think this was the one that, that had the most balance in terms of views with lots of people saying that they didn't think that this would benefit Enfield Town, but also lots of people saying, yes, I did think it would benefit Enfield Town. So um, all of this has been fed into the report and you'll see that measures such as introducing a, a 20 mile per hour limit um, in and around Enfield Town uh, and improving the, the, the Enfield Town Station Plaza uh, achieved you know, high levels of, uh, of support in the process. But then just the conclusions uh, on, on, on what we found proposals wise, um, we had some strong support for some of the measures, um, you know, in, as I've just said, improving the Enfield Town Station entrance and, and the speed limit and a mixed response um, on, on items like cycling infrastructure. Um, there was a recognition that the scheme delivers on the uh, design principle around providing transport choices to visitors. Um, but again, you know, there were concerns about the impact on the economy and one of the things that we've fed back to um, Enfield and we're doing a piece of work with businesses locally now is that, that there was some worry around some of the potential for the loss of on-street parking in, a, in and around um, Enfield Town, curbside parking, as well as, you know, that might have an impact on Enfield Town's evening economy. Um, and then uh, lastly, I just uh, thought it's worth raising that, you know, we, we have had a lot of feedback around accessibility as well, including from the National Federation of, of, of the Blind, um, about making sure that any proposals that are introduced in Enfield Town um, cater for the needs of those with mobility issues or those with uh, visual visual impairments. So that was really what, what we concluded on, on the proposals themselves, but please do read the report. Um, there is more detail there. Um, and then conclusions on, on the public spaces, I think, you know, people did welcome the fact that there were that there is going to be some investment in these public spaces. Um, People were supportive of more greening um, in, in the local area and um, they want to see Enfield Town's heritage celebrated moving forwards. Um, with the library green and the town park entrance, we, we, we sort of certainly felt that people want to see a sort of low key intervention. It's a really nice space as it is. Uh, I was there yesterday and uh, there were lots of people out and about having, a, having coffees and um, enjoying that particular space in the sunshine. So I think people realise that this is a really nice space. So a low key intervention which focuses on connecting Church Street with the town park entrance is, is something that was favoured, but big plans for this area are not, are not something that were, were talked about in the co-design workshop. With Sadler's Mill, Mill Square, I'm, Tim's going to talk a little bit more about, about that, but you know, people certainly felt that was a heritage opportunity and there's a there's an opportunity to provide space for people to sort of congregate and um, to rest in the town centre as they're moving from east to west or west to east. Um, and then Enfield Town Station, there's a particularly unique sort of wayfinding and heritage opportunity that, that, that was elucidated on uh, during the co-design workshops. And then uh, last but not least with Fountain Island, certainly there was a, a feeling that there should be more lighting 
uh, in and around uh, Fountain Islands that there should be more greening and that we should be really utilizing the fountain itself as a, as a heritage asset. So that's just a brief snapshot. Um, the, the report is on the website, which is letstalk.enfield.gov.uk forward slash Enfield Town. Um, and uh, please feel free to download that to review it and um, provide your feedback. Uh, thank you very much. I'm now going to hand over to Tim, who is going to um, take us through the, the co-design and the public spaces. Thanks. Thanks, Ollie. Can I just check that you can hear me okay? On yeah, laptop? loud and clear. Yeah. Great. Okay, thanks. It's um, fantastic to be speaking to you all this morning. Um, yeah. Uh, so before we get into it, I suppose what I want, I want to mention first of all is we've done a wealth of kind of analysis where we've met with lots of different focus groups. We've met with uh, the community through the, the co-design sessions. Um, and there's an awful lot that builds up the pictures to each of these spaces. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're not going to be going through all of that detail because we'd be here kind of all day. But I'll, this is kind of a summary of where we are at the moment. So next slide, please, Holly. Right, thanks. Um, so I'll talk you through each of the kind of the main spaces. So Station, Plaza, Fountain Island, uh, what we're calling at the moment Sadler's Mill Square and, and Library Green. The, the keen eyed am amongst you will, uh, will have noticed it was this, this was called five spaces. And for kind of transparency, we are looking at the market square, but that is looked at separately with the, um, the, the, the old Enfield Charitable Trust at the moment uh, as landowners. And we will be sharing those designs with you in more detail um, at a more appropriate stage when the when the level of design has been progressed sufficiently. But that's kind of for transparency. We're looking at five spaces, but we're going to talk about four today. Thanks. Next slide, please. Ollie. Um, yep. So first, we'll jump straight to the first one. Uh, next slide, please, Ollie. So the vision for this space, which was drawn through that kind of co-design, <clears throat> um, uh, the co-design process was to, to have a, a welcome arrival and the idea of a celebration of Enfield's culture and heritage here. So as you arrive into, into Enfield town, there's, there's a really strong connection with the past, uh, with what the town means and, um, and really, really welcomes people as they arrive into the town. OK, so um, character here. So um, some, there's some precedents, uh, some points of reference, notably through the, the co-design and more generally people picked up on, on, on and referenced um, kind of that remarkable literacy, history and, and poetry connection with Enfield Town, um, most notably Keats, um, specifically here. Um, this was mentioned as his, his prep school, the uh, Clark's Academy was originally on that kind of the footprint of this, of this space. Um, uh, and um, other suggestions were kind of interesting and a playful floorscape, which could include words, patterns uh, and symbols. Introducing rain gardens here as, a, as kind of a town-wide legibility tool. Um, reduction generally of street clutter, making the space more accessible. Um, somewhere to, pleasant to sit and wait for onward travel or, or the arrival of a friend potentially. Um, those are some, some, some sort of key ideas. Next slide. The, um, the list here, uh, so for each of the spaces, well, I've drawn out a bit of a list. Um, this is lifted directly from the co-design feedback um, and, and other focus groups. Uh, the, key, the key points raised by a few and repeated by several people. This isn't an exhaustive list by any means, and, and we took on board kind of the more comprehensive list of suggestions as well. So this is just a snapshot. Um, and just to go through a few of these, because it's to celebrate the new river loop, which is present on the opposite side of Southbury Road. And creating some kind of tangible link between, in, in terms of maybe planting, um, you know, sort of that uh, maybe the rain garden approach, messaging and character. So drawing that through into the space to create that kind of tangible connection. Um, there was an overwhelming poor sense of arrival. Um, that needs to we need to celebrate Enfield's culture and heritage through kind of interpretation uh, and by referencing through the landscape, the landscape design. Um, better. Uh, subliminal and functional wayfinding and connectivity with the town centre so when you arrive you know where to go it sort of feels like you know the way to the civic centre you know the way to the town centre um improvements to pedestrian crossings making that connect that physical connectivity better um and just enhancing the landscape uh, and environment through through planting and through the hard materials and just creating much 
better quality space. Next slide, please, Ollie. Um, so just a very quick shot of, of what we have at the moment. So um, the, the space is surrounded by uh, by Jenton Road and Southby Road, uh, north and to the uh, west. Uh, there's a pick up and drop off that kind of dissects through the space, kind of constrains that pedestrian, the, the, the people space, I suppose, within there. And then there's the Enfield Town Station there to the, to the south, uh, southeast. Next slide. Thanks. So what we have is, um, as we've kind of alluded to already, these kind of planters, uh, the rain garden planting, which captures rainwater runoff from, from the roads uh, into planting areas. So it does a number of things there. It's got quite a functional uh, planting scenario. Um, planting uh, seating that's kind of hugged uh, and inward facing on the space. So the seating is protected by planting um, and looking inward, inward to the space. Um, there's an, in, in this shot here, in this, in this plan here, there's, a, there's a, an island planter, uh, which also has seating. So there's lots of opportunities for seating um, within this space. Uh, next slide, please, Ollie. Um, and in terms of connectivity, there's, um, we're having much stronger connections, I think. Very clear and legible routes through the town centre, uh, through to the town centre and uh, to informal crossings. The, the cycleway that runs around the edge of this space now, so the cycleway is separated from the vehicle traffic, then also separated from pedestrian space, which will um, which will avoid those kind of those typical conflicts that we see in lots of different public spaces. Um, there's the taxi uh, pick up and drop off has just been moved slightly more to the um, to the east, uh, but creating much uh, still creating clear connectivity from the train station to that that taxi drop off spaces. Next slide. Um, very quickly, uh, I think it's quite a typical view that many of you will be uh, familiar with. Um, I think it, this really tells a, a quite a strong story here. So there's a lot going on. It's very, very busy. There's a lot of street clutter. Um, there's the vehicles immediately in front of you here. Um, it's not entirely clear where and how to cross the street um, and where, where you go to get into, into Enfield Town. Um, there's some remarkable architecture here, actually. There's some lovely, lovely architectural details, but you don't really lift your eye and, and look at those things because you're more concerned about kind of not getting run over uh, and making sure you're, um, you, you're not putting yourself at risk in any sort of way, but a very busy environment. Next slide. Uh, so what we, what we aim to do here is you arrive into Enfield Town and uh, your immediate, your eye, eye is immediately drawn towards the town centre. So you've got that kind of subliminal legibility that we're looking for. We've also got the, uh, the legible London signage there sort of along that, that, that vista. Um, so you, you're drawn to that. So that tells you where, where you um, should be going next and gives you a bit more of a, <clears throat> an idea of the context of the town. Um, lots of, of, of beautiful places to sit back by planting. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that when your, your back is protected by planting, then it feels safer. Um, so that's kind of the coordinate, the, how the seating has been, been kind of arranged there, but also lots of, lots of views through um, and very well overlooked space. We haven't created any hiding spaces, so it should be a very safe environment. Uh, next slide. And here's quite a, uh, an exciting opportunity, potentially the, um, the facade of Clark's Academy is in the basement of the VNA. The VNA are at the moment are looking to offload some of their kind of their exhibits that have been in storage for some time back to their original locations, um, as, as we understand it. Um, it would be a great opportunity to kind of have this within the space as uh, you know a tangible link with the past. It needs some more development, some more thought process behind it, but um, it's, it's an idea for now. Next slide. Um, and then, uh, and what goes for, for all spaces, the idea is, is to extend the life of these spaces beyond daylight hours and to make them feel safe and secure uh, into the evening. Um, interesting lighting, which we are developing further at the moment through kind of this more tech, uh, going into a more technical level of design. Um, so what you see here may not be kind of exactly what we get. This is kind of the, uh, the conceptual approach, but we're going to work towards something that's really interesting in terms of lighting. Next slide. So onto Fountain Island. Um, yep, yeah, next slide, please. Um, 
So again, just a few things I'd, I'd like to draw out from the co-design and focus groups and, and everything else we've gone through to date. Um, there's a need for kind of additional seating, including that alfresco dining um, that integrates landscape improvements and really important, important at the moment uh, in terms of, kind of uh, making sure businesses can be successful through this kind of this COVID uh, period we're going through, um, more cafe seating outdoors. Um, include planting to create a sense of enclosure and protection. Uh, there were suggestions for, for planters, flower beds, uh, additional trees, um, and, and focus on bee friendly planting as well, which is which is great at the moment. Um, Fountain Highland Island was highlighted as a particular opportunity for the rain garden approach as well, and suds, um, albeit we know kind of those constraints and, and, and challenges for that. Um, feature lighting as well. Um, and, and an appetite certainly for a flexible space which can host kind of a, a more events and have greater commercial potential, maximizing um, flexibility while addressing those day-to-day -day uses. Next slide, please, Ollie. Um, and the vision, which is drawn from all of that stuff we've kind of been through, uh, was to create the People's Plaza and a real sense of belonging uh, and a social space for the community. Next slide, please. Um, the precedents here kind of suggest that it's a very kind of flexible space with a high quality finish that is kind of accessible uh, and usable. Um, notably opportunities uh, for spill out and alfresco dining, kind of critical to that future success and pubs and, pubs and restaurants for post COVID kind of era. Comfortable seating, uh, protected from vehicular space and reinforcing the special kind of special features of the space, for example, kind of that, that, that the enduring legacy of that, the, the drinking fountain. Next slide. Yep, so very quickly, what we've got at the moment, we've, we've, the, 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 the space, as very similar with um, Station Plaza, as it's surrounded on, on two sides, quite contained by, by busy traffic space. We've got that historic fountain. The view here taken um, obviously shows that, that it's being used for, in this instance, for, for a fair. So, it's a, a very flexible space used for lots of different things. We have some trees within the space, um, but a lot largely featureless kind of environment. Next space, next slide, sorry. Thanks. So um, yeah, our um, our plan, it's kind of, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of being quite restrained here, I suppose. It's making sure that we don't preclude the, um, the future functionality and flexibility of the, of the space. Um, so uh, we, have, um, we have planting that kind of hugs around the edge. And I would say this kind of has a lot of synergy with the, um, with the station plaza. This is by no means kind of a, a lazy approach to design. The idea is that we have a, a family of spaces throughout the whole town centre. So um, there's a legibility thing that happens there that the spaces within the town core feel similar. They have a similar language and character throughout each, each space. Um, planting to the edges to protect the space from the busy vehicle spaces, more, more, some more busy vehicle spaces. We make sure that uh, the drinking fountain is given, given that pride of place. Um, we, uh, also include some seating within within the space as well, which you may think of initially may uh, limit flexibility, but the idea would be to have those as modular and movable seating, which would be sufficiently weighted to be moved by events teams with a pump truck, those sorts of that's those sorts of uh, pieces of kit. So uh, gravity fixed, I suppose you'd call it in space in in place, um, and then um, cafe seating opportunities, which could extend out into the into the whole space. Next slide, please, Ollie. And, and thinking about um, pedestrian movement, so that's very much a focus on, on this space. So it's, it, as well as a place to dwell and to spend time, it, it is a place to move through. So we think very clearly about clear and easy flows of, of, of pedestrian movement and connectivity through the space. Next slide. Um, an existing shot of the of the space as we as we see it today. Well, not quite today with the with the recent with the, the kind of testing opportunities that are in there at the moment. But um, recently, this is a this is a shot from the, from the space. And quite telling, I think it's a, it feels like quite a hostile environment. There's very very there's a busy vehicular space there. Um, there's very little protection from that vehicular space. It feels very much like a space to move through. 
uh, rather than spend time. Indeed, there are, there are hardly any kind of uh, seating opportunities within the space. Um, when I was there um, last summer, that fountain was used by loads of people to sit on. So it just shows you there is a bit of a need there and a bit of a desire for, uh, for people to sit uh, for, for seating opportunities. Uh, next slide. And here's, our, here's our, our view as we have it. So we have these rain gardens which hug the space and protect it from the, the vehicular spaces. Um, largely a clear open space in the centre for that kind of functionality and, and flexibility. The, uh, the modular seats you can kind of see um, in the in the centre there are those um, a kind of movable element that's shown there in kind of an everyday mode. But then there's lots of different opportunities and flexibility for that, that which you may see in the next slide, I think, Holly. Yeah, thanks. So you can see here those seats have now been redistributed, uh, those cube elements redistributed uh, to create kind of a more social environment. So seating that can face each other, clusters of seating. Um, we've tested lots of different op options for how those seats could be reconfigured throughout the space. So lots of different modes for those. Um, and this allows, again, again, that kind of extension of cafe and alfresco dining into the space. Next slide. And uh, onto Sadler's Mill Square. So there's a sketch there as you as you kind of see it see it today. Really, um, we're calling it Sadler's Mill Square. This I know it's still up to for some some debate. And I think that um, uh, one suggestion was the naming of the space should be open to the, the public and uh, presents a great opportunity. We've named it Sadler's Mill Square at the moment because of kind of the the Sadler's Mill runs below the space. Um, and part of our, our idea was to kind of reveal that um, as a as a feature. Um, it was noted there's a a, a valued, beautiful, mature lime tree, uh, which is a defining feature of the space, which offers kind of continuity and connectivity with leafy neighbourhoods to the north, which we need to be very careful of in terms of disturbance. So whatever we do in the space needs to be very careful and mindful of, of tree roots. Um, uh, we're asked to explore opportunities to repurpose the telephone boxes, uh, the list of telephone boxes. So they can be retained as special features, but maybe utilised in, in alternate ways. Uh, and the space needs to explore kind of sustainable urban drainage solutions and rain gardens to manage and store flood water. We're told that this area is a place that floods quite frequently. Uh, next slide, please, Ollie. So the vision uh, for Sadler's Mill Square was reimagining a, a hidden stream. So the, the culverted stream sits sort of three meters below. So it was it pro it's, it proves impossible really to to revit to actually open that up, but it's to kind of reimagine that and how can we um, convey that through the public realm, and also a welcome interlude from from the busy high street, so a place to pause and stop and rest along the uh, along the high street. Um, so uh, here the suggestion was by a lot of people to create an idea of a welcome break and that interlude um, provides something maybe informally playable. Um, a place to meet and greet uh, with that kind of really strong um, green identity here. I think that's a really important part of this space, a really strong planting palette. Um, next slide. So uh, as uh, the, the existing plan, as we see it today, is it's really it's a, it's a it's a space that doesn't really have any um it doesn't have an identity as such it doesn't really have any purpose um it's effectively wide pavements and a, a cut through for vehicular access there's those listed telephone kiosks there apologies for the quality of this it's zoomed in quite a lot on the aerial so it starts to pixelate um next slide please ollie thanks and uh our plan um shows this idea of some some really kind of strong planted areas that are hugged by by seating, um, a generous seating offer to uh, allow, allow that kind of welcome break along the high street. Um, we have the, a piece of artwork which runs through the space here, which could tell stories, could use the kind of literary connection um, and talks about water um, and that kind of um, historic and cultural connection between uh, Enfield Town and, and water. Um, and that kind of runs through the listed telephone kiosks uh, there, kind of repositioned slightly to make more sense within the space. Um, and it's kind of there's kind of a focus of a central area there, kind of to spill out and for some gathering. Um, you see kind of stepping stones that weave through the planting beds as as well. Uh, next slide. 
In terms of movement, there's uh, connectivity along the along the high street, and that's left very clear and, and open. Um, and then the space itself is focused very much on uh, free flowing connectivity and movement through the space. So desire lines are picked up, um, and it connects very strongly with those kind of um, uh, those uh, neighbourhoods to the to the north. It becomes I suppose the idea is it as well, it becomes kind of this idea as an orientation space. So this is your gateway and threshold into the town centre when coming from the from the north. Um, and there's also a, a, an informal cycleway that, that sort of connects through as as well there, but has has little impact on the quality and, and usability of the of the space. Um, again, uh, an image that we see today and what I mentioned before, really, that it doesn't really have a, a purpose. It doesn't really have a role as such an identity in kind of that high that hierarchy of, of spaces within the town centre. It's a it kind of feels a little bit of a wasted space. Next slide. And the the view as we've kind of developed at the at the moment here. So there's that really kind of beautiful planting palette here. Um, something to really kind of draw you in and uh, sort of have, allow people to have that kind of connect, connection with nature here uh, in a, in an unexpected way. I think we'd we'd, we'd say. Um, seating edges which surround these planted areas. So, uh, yep, so backed by planting again for the, for the safety. As you can sort of kind of, you kind of note, uh, there's, there's clear views through uh, and it's well overlooked, secured by design principles have been adhered to. Um, and uh, yeah, there's a stepping stone through the, through the planting. You can just pick up the artwork as well, which runs through the, runs through the space and connects the space together as well. Thank you, next slide. Yeah, and with, uh, as with the other spaces, um, it's about extending the, the life of the space into the evening, uh, making sure it's still lively and it attracts enough people. There's kind of that um, the critical mass of people attracted to the space so it still feels safe after, after dark. Um, again, the lighting design is being developed. So what you see here may not be exactly what we, what we achieve, but we're working up something that, that, that uses this as a, as a concept driver. Next slide, please. Uh, and onto the, the last space, uh, Library Green and Town Park entrance. Um, okay, so I spoke before, the main thing here, overwhelmingly, the feeling was that the space is, is well loved uh, and understandably so, it's, it's a lovely environment. Um, and therefore it's, it's more about making a, a good place great rather than having you know these wholesale changes and it's really making tweaks to the space rather than anything else. Um, we want, we need to form, a powerful connection between Church Street through Library Green to the town park to kind of stitch these two into the into the movement network. Um, we were asked to retain some of the surrounding planting to maintain the kind of sense of enclosure, but appraise the planting to rationalise um, and improve to allow allow views in, but maintain that enclosure if, if that makes if that makes sense. Um, there was a, a desire to enhance the flexible nature of the space, which can accommodate more events and even occasional artisan uh, and seasonal markets. And I suppose as a footnote, it shouldn't compete with the market, market square. It's not, it's not aiming to do that. It's just um, enabling a, a, uh, an appropriate thing like a book market or, or things like that would be, a, would be a good thing to have here. Um, and there's a need for better infrastructure uh, and facilities to such as public power and more robust or reinforced lawn spaces mm -hmm. for temporary structures that protect against that kind of longer term. Uh, damage of, of the lawns. Um, next slide. So the vision here. So as of with uh, Fountain Island, we had the People's Plaza. Uh, the uh, this is the the People's Garden, and the idea is a, a green oasis uh, in the heart of, of Enfield, which it it already is in a lot of ways. So it's more about kind of just reinforcing that. Um, so uh, sensitively. Um, segregated leisure cycle access uh, for example here would be was something that was desirable um opportunities for flexible uses community events performances those sorts of things uh more powerful gateways so kind of just elevate the gateway of the space make it kind of lift it in terms of the hierarchy of spaces uh and clear and direct access uh, to improve legibility uh beautiful places to sit and relax nestled in kind of biodiverse and and varied native and uh, and non-native planting Next slide. 
So um, a space that's very much surrounded by by vehicular routes, um, a varying kind of business, Church Street and Cecil Road, I suppose, being the busier, Sarnesville Road being, being less so. Um, it's got a, a path network that links through that Fountain Plaza to the, to the town library, and there's the children's reading area um, to the southwest corner of the space, but, and, but notably no connection through to town park entrance. Next slide. So um, the structure of our, our space is st still maintains the kind of um, the, the hugging nature of the planting that kind of surrounds the space. Um, this has kind of been uh, developed in terms of the, the shape and orientation of those um, uh, of those planting areas to, to accommodate things like small stages on the lawns, um, other functional elements, uh, potentially, you know, allowing those markets and things like that to be drawn through. We maintain the um, the fountain within the space um, as, a, as a focus there so that's still retained and we just kind of adjust and, and, and massage the, um, the path network. We have notably we have um, a change really to the to the western edge and it'll that'll become clear I think when we show you the visual is we we draw the planting um, out right to the curb edge with Cecil Road so then uh, so what we do then is we draw the footpath network inside the, the green so it feels like when you're when you're walking north to south along Cecil Road or south to north you're, you, you're walking through the library green rather than walking on the road edge so uh, we don't have parallel paths or additional paths we have like the path has been relocated um, there's a, a new kind of approach to the uh, to the sensory garden um, play space reading corner for the for the, um, the town library there to the southwest uh, that is dissected by a path but we're looking at how that can work in in, in detail um, next slide, please. Holly. Thanks. And uh, then I suppose that talking about kind of the movement framework, there is that much strong connection between um, the, um, between Church Street and the town centre through the uh, through through the space through through Library Green and to to Town Park to the Town Park entrance. There's a really strong connection there. Um, other elements of the um, of the path network are either retained in place or they're massaged slightly to sort of just just create better connections really through we have that um cycleway as i've just as i just mentioned just now as well to the to the west next slide um so here we have a, a view of that, that that beautiful um library building there um on on library green uh, it's surrounded very much by a lot of these these very uh, monocultured, dense planting, which isn't necessarily great for ecology. Um, but um, yeah, but what, what, that, what that also does is it uh, creates hiding spaces and it very much blocks views into the green. Um, but it does it does perform that kind of function of, of, of enclosure. Next slide, Ollie. Thanks. So what we really do is we look to change that planting palette, if you will, um, and this, this does need more work, I suppose. What, what you're looking at here is something that's very kind of herbaceous, perennial. We want something that's more structural and, and evergreen as well. Um, so that needs to be developed. But really, it's about opening views into the space, also maintaining that sense of enclosure. Uh, clear direct lines of sight through the through the library green to connect through to the town park, uh, and really lifting that um, that gateway as 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 part of it, as to sort of announce the. Um, the entrance into the library green. Next slide, please, Ollie. <clears throat> yeah, and this is just an example of, we have that kind of the, the idea of, of areas of reinforced uh, lawn spaces, uh, wider paths that can accommodate these um, uh, potentially markets, um, occasional artisan markets, whatever they are along that space. Um, and also the, the, the um, the lawns themselves to allow for performance and those sorts of things. Next slide, please, Ollie. Yeah, and um, then this again is the the lighting approach. Just again, extend the life of the space into the into the evening and the infrastructure necessary to allow things to maybe happen in the evening. So the festoon lights you can see there over the centre wouldn't be kind of permanent fixtures, so they'd need to be kind of plug and play. So it's it's where you and how you plug into those. Those sources of electricity and those sorts of things to make it more functional. Next slide. There's just a couple more.
And then this is over to the western side and just very quickly to illustrate uh, what I'm talking about in terms of the, the access along this edge. Um, so we have that kind of uh, the planting um, along the western edge there and then beyond that there's a footpath, narrow footpath next to the, the carriageway and no connection through to the town park. Next slide. So what we do here is we, we kind of push that planting approach right out to the curb edge and we improve the, um, the, condition, the, the condition for those trees there, the existing trees along the curb edge. So they're now in soft, soft, a soft landscape and we draw the footpath and the segregated leisure cycle way uh, inside, uh, inside that planting. Like uh, sweeping paths that, that sort of loop into the, um, into the library green uh, and um, and, and, to, and potentially stitch into the uh, future of, of Palace Exchange, although that's a little unknown as to what's happening with that at the moment, but there's potential to stitch in with that as we move forwards. Um, great connections. And just the left here, um, there's a cycle storage opportunity, very similar to what we see outside the station at the moment. So you can park, just park your bikes uh, at this end of town and walk in if you like, uh, if you so wish. There's also other cycle parking opportunities throughout the whole town centre, but it's, an, it's another option. Um, and I think I've talked enough. Um, thanks very much for listening to me and giving up your Saturday to do so. Um, take any questions after. Thanks very much. Thanks, Tim. That's great. And um, I'll just hand over now to uh, Richard Eason at Enfield for the final slide. Thanks, Ollie. Can you hear me OK? Yeah. Yeah, great. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tim. Yeah, we'll come back to questions on that. Um, so yeah, just to give you some orientate you really over the, over the next steps and make a, a few observations about some of the things that are happening uh, currently. Um, so on the left of the slide here, we've got uh, summertime. So some of you who've been into the town centre um, more recently will have noticed that we've um, the council have put out some um, some new planters, um, concrete temporary uh, planters um, out onto Fountain Island. And the whole um, idea behind that is this: this is part of the sort of town centre post COVID recovery. Um, and what we're looking at doing, um, and this will start next week, um, is increasing the licensing space in Fountain Island so that so that the current restaurants and indeed some some other restaurants um, um, in the vicinity can have out, outdoor seating areas. So we're having with the, the the planters are there to try to bring a sense of sort of enclosure, if you like, uh, to the space and, and for the greenery to to lift the space. So this is a, an example of a of a sort of trial or an experiment or a pilot study um, of, of learning how the space works and, and how can these type of experiments um, inform the longer term plans. Um, so I can come back and answer questions on that um, uh, as well. Um, we've also had some, some sort of loading engagement that's been happening um, with businesses and local residents uh, this week as well. It's also continuing uh, next week, I think, where we're going around to the individual businesses, speaking to them, um, showing them what we're proposing in, in terms of future loading uh, and receiving feedback on them to, to make sure we, we properly understand, in addition to all the surveys uh, that we've already done, um, that we understand their requirements and that the plans that we're bringing forward are, are fit for purpose. And then also um, what's happening is, is continuation of, of the highway elements of the design. So today we focused on, on the public spaces, um, but there's other work going on uh, in, in, in terms of the road layout uh, as well. So moving then through to the autumn and the winter, uh, so the development of the design will, will, will continue. Um, Tim has mentioned the work that we're doing, working in collaboration with the Market Trust ar around um, the Market Square and, and how we can sort of partner and work together to um, to bring some improvements to that space as well. We, I think there's a, a consensus uh, that that really is the heart of the town and, and, and we want to enhance that space um, if that's possible. And more design work around wayfinding in terms of, you know, how do people make sense of the town centre and how will they move around and know where different things are, um, particularly, you know, as they arrive at the train station at the moment, it's, it's not clear, for example, um, you know, how you navigate through to the town centre. And other more detailed aspects, we've, we've had a little look at some sort of, sort of lighting ideas, but lighting itself is a, you know, is, is a hugely sort of uh, specialist area. Um, so we will be working on what type of lighting design the scheme will need, along with other aspects such as, for example, CCTV, what changes do we need to make to the CCTV? Um, so um, 
all of that work will be ongoing and that will accumulate um, towards the end of the year um, with, uh, with some further presentations to the community which show that this combined uh, design of both the public realm um, and the highway spaces so that everybody can get a sense of the, of the whole project. Um, so we, we propose to be doing that um, towards the end of this year. Um, and then that will move us into, into next year, um, where we'll um, progress to detailed design. So what, what, what we're seeing here, looking at, is, is sort of a concept design stage, as we call it. So um, there's, you know, once we're you know, confident that we've got that sort of concept right, then we can move into the, into the more technical um, detailed design. And, and there's, a, there's a lot of work to do there. Um, and then that will help inform uh, um, and enable us to be ready for a for a formal statutory consultation on the proposals um, sometime towards the end of, of next year. So all this activity that we've been doing um, you know, for, for some time now is, is, this, is this engagement work to make sure that, that, that what we're bringing forward um, is not, um, um, not the, what, all aspects of it won't be um, sort of endorsed by everybody. It's a complicated scheme and we're managing lots of different um, different stakeholders and, and different people have different views so so there'll be some bits that people like and maybe some bits that people don't like but but overall we want to bring forward a coherent plan that we think is the best for the town centre both for now and and for future generations but once we've got all that that clear we will go through this formal uh, consultation process uh, with a view then to looking to start a, a, a the, the implementation of the project at some time in 2023. Um, they will, we've already done some, some work, for example, in Little Park Gardens, where we've started to improve the public realm there. I've talked about these temporary measures that are happening uh, on Fountain Island as part of the post-COVID recovery. And no doubt throughout the period, um, we're looking for other things that we can do uh, that where we can bring forward improvements or we can try things. So I think people should expect uh, to see different things happening potentially. So we're not just waiting until 2023 um, but, um, but those, those things will be smaller scale um, and, and more experimental uh, until we're ready to bring forward uh, the final scheme. Ollie, I think I'll hand back to you. Brilliant, thanks Richard, uh, really helpful. Um, we'll get straight into the questions. We've got about half an hour, I've got a couple of hands up and uh, some questions that have been submitted. Anything we don't cover uh, in this session is gonna be picked up by uh, Liz at Enfield Council. There will be responses going online, but I'm gonna, Bring on over to talk first. If I hopefully I've pronounced that correctly. Over over to you. You can unmute yourself and ask your question. Yep. Do you want to stop Thank sharing, you. Ollie, as well? Yeah, I'll start stop yeah. sharing. Oh, there we go. Oh, just... Yeah, perfect. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, loud and clear. Perfect. Please ask your question. Perfect. Cheers. Uh, well, th th uh, first, uh, I think it's Tim who presented the the different uh, graphic designs of the different areas, which is looks all great. And my only uh, my only thing is, it's you know not to overpromise and under the under deliver because uh, it all looks fantastic, and I'm hoping that uh, there will be substance to to those designs and the way it looks, uh, the lighting. I know you said it's aspirational, but hopefully it will be like that. So uh, that looks great so far. Um, my other point is very quickly those concrete planters. Now I appreciate you said it's a temporary measure. One, temporary. How how long temporary it is until what the project starts in 2023. Uh, secondly, just to be very clear, that is a monstrosity of, of a site of concrete planters. Spoke, spoken to many people in the community and it's not welcome those, those plants. I understand from today's conversation as to why you're doing that, but just to be very clear and, and to when you start gathering more information around what you're going to be doing in those spaces, that concrete is an absolute eyesore. It feels cold, it feels uninviting. Um, so, and I don't want to come across negative or anything. I understand the purpose after today's call, but really just to be clear, when you are thinking about doing other temporary measures, just to have in mind that people are thinking, because that no one knows that these are temporary measures unless on this call. So um, it's just that, that's just the thought around that, by the way, that's the feedback I've had from my community. Um, and it's, a, it's an unsightly uh, addition, even though it's temporary. But my question is, how long is that temporary? Is it for just this summer or until 2023? Thank you. Thanks, Over. I'm going to hand over, I think, uh, to Richard in the first instance, if that's okay, Richard. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, thank, thank, thanks for that feedback. Um, you know, I appreciate that, um, that people will have different views of, of the type of material and things that we've used there. Um, I don't know the... Um, the honest answer is I don't know the, the, the 
the duration of that definitely for the summer and the idea was that we you know as town centers start to reopen we wanted to get something that we could deploy there um, very quickly um, and so to a certain extent there is what is available on, on the market that can get delivered in the time that we need to, to get it delivered by. Um, I do think, um, and time will tell, that once once those licensed areas pop up and and there's more seating and things there, at the moment it, it looks quite austere because it's um, it doesn't look like it's sort of surrounding anything. I think once there's more um, tables and chairs within that space, I think it will soften it. Um, I think we're also, you know, looking at, at um, you know, the, the potential to do some sort of bit of art or some painting of some of those, um, those planters as well. Um, but um, I do take, I, you know, I do take your point. Um, and I think, again, um, it's difficult when when we when we're bringing forward these projects sort of quite quickly and it takes a little while to implement over several days or or a couple of weeks in this instance um you know people are not always clear about um, about what we're doing and maybe, maybe there's something we can think about there in terms of the, the pre-communication on, on that particular exercise and maybe that's something to think about for the future um so certainly for this summer um and i think we'll, we'll see what the feedback is i i've seen feedback that echoes what you're saying i've seen other feedback that that's very much welcoming that additional greenery and and and, and people saying actually i quite like the concrete so there is a range of views uh, and um, we'll we'll gather some of those views um you know th throughout throughout the summer thanks richard and, and could you also address the point i raised about the gap between we've got terrific plans that have been that have been shown it how are these going to be delivered? Is there a gap between the expectations that you're setting now and what might actually be delivered on the ground and how are you going to sort of ensure that you deliver on what's been outlined here? Yeah, again, you know, that's, a, you know, it's, it's a really valid point of of, of not over promising. Um, these, these plans are ambitious. And I think as we've, as we've embarked upon this project, I think it's fair to say that we've 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 sort of increased our ambition a little bit um, because we want to do, you know, the, with being a strong sense in the team and in the community that the, that the town centre sort of really deserves um, more than than it's sort of currently offering, and we think we can deliver that. So then there becomes a question of of affordability uh, and a question a question of, of of phasing as well. So so it might be that we that we say, well, actually, we do want to do this right, um, but it. But therefore, it's going to take us longer to deliver, you know, the whole scheme, and we'll focus on this area, and we'll get that right, and then incrementally, we, we may come um, back and revisit some areas. So that might, that would be my personal preference. Would be um, if it's going to cost more than we originally thought, then let's take a little bit longer to get it done, rather than, you know, uh, dumb down, if you like, the plans uh, to fit the budget. But that 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 will be up for discussion as we move forward. But it's uh, I hear the points. We need to be careful about what we're promising. Brilliant. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to just quickly head to some of the written submissions before going back to the hands. So first one in um, from Sarah Louis, um, a vibrant economy is vital to bring people to Enfield Town. What is actually going to happen to this? And then um, the second question, which I'll, I'll very quickly answer is I'm not one of the 73% identifying as as why in the in the phase two process. Uh, have you had responses from other diverse community groups in Enfield Town? Uh, yes, we, we did. We had a whole series of um, responses from different groups different ethnicities um just having a look at the survey data we have people from uh Greek Cypriot Turkish Cypriot um you know Black British um you know we had ver various different ethnicities um people from different ethnic groups that did contribute we would have obviously liked to have seen more of that and we're always willing to listen to ideas to get as diverse a range of people participating in the process as possible so um Liz, if you could just put in the um, the Healthy Streets email address so Sarah Lou can get in touch with suggestions, that would be great. Yep, sure. Um, so just so everyone knows, it, it's healthystreets at enfield.gov.uk um, and you would have all received an email from that email address in the past few days. So we're always happy to hear suggestions about how to drive participation for the widest range of groups. Um, so going back to that vibrant economy point, Richard, in, in the phase two engagement, sort of there was some scepticism as to whether the proposals deliver on on that vibrant economy design principle that, that have been established. Um, what work is going on to, to ensure that that, you know, the Enfield Town's economy is vibrant moving forwards? Yeah, I mean, the the, the, the public realm improvements um, you know don't just stand alone so we're working with colleagues and other colleagues in the council are working about you know uh, for example what series of events can we have in the town center how can we draw more people in how can we create the space better so that there's a, a more 
sort of organized series of events you know how can we celebrate the, our culture more and there's a, there's a range of things happening we, um, one thing i didn't mention previously was the the month of sundays event that people might have heard of um so i will double check because i can't remember off the top of my head when that is in enfield town but that that's a series of culture events in different town centers uh, throughout the month of august um and enfield town sort of features on that program um, so I think it's about the council sort of working uh, coherently uh, together across departments, but also working with partners like the, the, the Market Trust and, um, and other partners about who, who can we bring forward into the town centre to, to continue to sort of increase the, uh, the interest and, and draw more people in. I mean, this is a, you know clearly a hugely challenging time. The town centres, you know, across the UK have, have, have arguably never been in such a difficult position. So, uh, don't underestimate uh, the challenge. Um, but I think um, it, fundamentally, if you can uh, create the right sort of backdrop, the right foundations uh, for a town centre to thrive, because the public realm is of a good quality and people want to spend time there, then then that's that's a great foundation to sort of to drive that um, you know that activity. Brilliant. And if, I, and if I could just add to that, I suppose, as well, in that um, a lot of our designs of the spaces, they also they focus very much on that kind of flexibility and functionality of space. So it's about enabling those things to take place within the public spaces as well, rather than precluding. So it's about just reinforcing that and accessible and usable surfaces and, and those sorts of things we think about in the detail. Thanks. Thanks, Tim. Um, lots of good contributions coming in as well, which uh, which we will capture. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to bring in, uh, I think Nit Nitty has uh, submitted uh, four questions here. So we'll take each of them very quickly in turn. Uh, the first is, will the huge puddle that forms outside the parade of shots every time it rains be dealt with? Um, is there somebody, somebody in particular, Nitty, you might need to clarify where the, where specifically that happens, just in case, Richard, you might have a have an idea being an Enfield Town man yourself. Um, uh, but, so, yeah, I mean, yes is the answer. So, so the, you know, there will... The, you know there are issues ongoing sort of highway maintenance issues if there is a pond in there and i think i know where you mean um you know they, they don't necessarily need to wait um and and until that time but yes as part of the scheme we can address those sort of uh, historic maintenance issues great and whilst i've got you will the proposed cycle lane run down southbury road on the pavement which is already very narrow um, so the the it won't be on the pavement. So so there will be some cycling facilities. We do want to make sure that there's a, a sort of cycling link out to the east, uh, and ultimately that that will sort of connect through um, to um, right through to sort of Ponder's End um, and and to, to the River Lee, hopefully ultimately. Um, but those facilities will not be um, on the pavement as such. There may be some segregated facilities. I think um at similar pavement level on the southern side and i think on the northern side it will be on on carriageway so as part of the as part of the plans when we're looking at the highway elements we are looking at at the moment there's areas where the highway has more um more space than it needs and it and part of this is, is about rebalancing that space so so the curb lines and things like that can move around so it's you don't necessarily need to think about how that might fit in in the current configuration uh, we'll, we'll be moving things around to make sure that there's safe space for people walking safe space for people cycling um, and, and adequate space for, for people who are driving and, and, and people who are using the buses so then uh, just how does this focus on, so this is another question related to um, uh, post exchange and gardens I think how does it, uh, this focus on heritage work with the proposed development of the shopping center where heritage is not a guiding principle um, probably probably worth just uh, elucidating on on any work that's gone on with with the Palace Exchange and Gardens uh, team, Richard, and sort of how this segues into to that project and if there are any links to it at all. Yeah, I mean, we, the, the council has not received a planning application yet, but um, the developer has, you know, previously uh, last summer, I think it was, you know, run their engagement exercise. So I think a lot of people have seen what their what their early proposals were, and you know, there's you know some some people again welcoming some of those aspects. Certainly, uh, a good number of people concerned about certain uh, aspects of that as well. Um, what we're what uh, our role is to do is to make sure that. That any development, if some development does come forward, um, that the public realm aspects of that are completely coherent. So, so we want to make sure. So the council is sort of driving what that the look and feel of that might be like, uh, and making sure that the that the sort of public spaces, um, um, 
merge sort of seamlessly in with with the spaces within the with, within the shopping center um, so that's that, that's important work that we've sort of had some discussions around but again until a, a planning application comes forward it's 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 just you know it's just that it's just sort of early discussions and the other thing of course that we need to make sure with this project is that we're effectively lining up for example any pedestrian crossings um, that might be required so some of the designs that that I saw from the from the shopping center you know was potentially proposing uh, new routes through which I think is a, a sort of a, a positive aspect uh, and sort of you know trying to um, open up the frontage to, to Cecil Road a little bit more so where there's new uh, walkways through the through the uh, shopping centre we need to make sure that we, we've got our plans aligned and I've, I've already we talked a little bit about the the timeline for the program um, and so you know um, there's there's opportunity for our our plans to evolve to to align with um, those crossing points and things um, you know should a planning application come forward okay and there's a there's a last question here about and I think this is probably out of scope but might be able to be picked up by a colleague which is can anything be done to address the wind tunnel created by the flats on Coleman parade it might be one that's beyond the scope of this project, Richard. But um, perhaps want to pass on to council, coll uh, council colleagues as a as an inquiry that's come around around wind tunneling on Coleman Parade. Yeah, okay. and I certainly that, yeah, I can I can take that back. Okay, great. I'm going to bring on uh, Richard Whitaker to talk now. Richard, you can unmute yourself and then ask your question. Thanks. Um... This is a question that picks up a little bit on just what, what Richard said actually about um, the work you're doing around traffic and uh, and the, the, the sort of um, you know the, the changes that will need to be made I suppose in relation to you know um, the, the roads and things like that um, because it seems to me that a lot of these proposals really depend on you know the look and feel of it really depends on reducing motor traffic and really opening up the the sense of kind of pedestrian and potentially cycling as well options you know it seemed actually some of the specific plans you have in the, in the you're working on reducing lanes of traffic you know that seems to be the case on Cecil Road it seems to be the case you know as you move from uh from the town on, onto Southbury Road um obviously it, it sounds like you're still working on that you're still you're still reviewing that but I guess a concern I would have is that, you know, if you think back to the challenges you've had in relation to the Mini Holland scheme, uh, where there had been originally plans to through the town to be improving, you know, cycling specifically there, but obviously reducing most traffic, they all seem to sort of completely die to death and, you know, obviously haven't gone anywhere. You, you That tells me you've hit a lot of the challenges with trying to actually kind of push those through. Uh, what gives you confidence that you can do what you plan with this? because it seems to require the same level of reduction in motor traffic. Thank you, Richard. Um, to the other Richard for that one, for an answer on that, I think. I think I think this is a, a much more holistic uh, scheme. So both in terms of you know looking at the design um, and you know the you know the engagement that we that we've that we've had and the, and the co-design. Um, I think this is a scheme that's going to be uh, much more uh, welcome than than perhaps the previous one was that that you know you could argue and I, I i was involved in that scheme was 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 brought forward much quicker um and you know there was a perception whilst that those previous schemes did have a lot of um public realm um considerations as well but um everybody did seem to sort of focus in on 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 the cycling elements um but um you know i think this i think this is a this is a, a really good um, or is shaping up to be a really good uh, design that at, at its heart sort of prioritizes um, pedestrians. Um, there will be, um, as you say, we will be looking at what sort of carriage space is available for motor vehicles and, and, and looking to, uh, to reduce that, to reallocate that space uh, back to people. But we're going through a really comprehensive uh, modeling um, approach to that um, so that we're confident that the town centre and what we're proposing uh, means that the town centre can continue to function and that people could still you know continue to arrive by car as as, as many do so um um yeah i think i think the, the 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 detailed work the community engagement um the 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 level of expertise and specialists that we've got working on this project and some um, um of which you've heard from tonight means that um i think as long as we can keep securing the funding um so there's always uncertainty particularly in these covid times um, but I'm, you know, I'm confident that we can bring forward a, a, a really positive scheme. Thank you, Richard. I'll just just link to that. Actually, Vanessa has asked uh, a question just specifically on 
um, the traffic island in Cecil Road? Um, and is this going to be removed as part of the proposal? If we're sort of referring to sort of Banana Island, as it's sort yeah. of more locally referred to, then so, uh, yeah. then yeah, the answer to that is yes. These proposals um, um, suggest the removal of that. Um, um, so that we can better connect that library green with with the town with the town centre park, uh, and I think what we're looking at is a you know is a wide signalised pedestrian crossing um, in that location uh, to enable that safe movement and that that current traffic island, which is a sort of traffic management function, um, um, you know would well would, would be in the way, but would, would, neither would it be necessary as we move forward with you know really calming the traffic. Um, you know, and and making making the the area much sort of less less dominated by fast moving traffic. With we have a twenty mile an hour uh, limit and various other measures to really um, slow that traffic. Um, but I'm happy to hear if there's particular things about that that people like. Then you know, then we can hear about that. Great. Okay. Um, uh, an anonymous attendee said, "Looks great, but we'll suffer from lots of litter. So will um, Enfield invest more in street cleaning for this scheme?" There's already lots of litter over the street and dwell spaces will attract more. Is there anything that you can say on that at all, Richard, around street cleaning? Yeah, I think we, you know, we do have a, um, a you know, comprehensive sort of street cleaning plan at the moment. I mean, if there's, if there's areas where people feel are getting neglected, then, then you know, do let us know. But um, yeah, that's an important part of any any sort of town centre, keeping it, keeping it clean. Okay. And then a, a couple of questions have uh, come in around the 20 mile per hour limit. Um, I think it's a great idea, but what considerations have been made towards in, enforcement? How, 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 what proposal have you got for enforcing a, a 20 mile per hour limit if it is introduced uh, in Enfield Town? I can take that if you honestly Yeah, please, Aga, yeah, please. Go no, no, it. that's the... Yeah. So in terms of the 20 mile per hour speed limit, we are creating an environment that will, uh, will be almost self um, sort of enforcing. And uh, the examples that you might be referring to might be environments where the 20 mile per hour speed limit is not necessarily servants forcing and it's really difficult to enforce in those situations. We are going to be monitoring the speed post implementation in addition to the environment we are um, proposing and if there's going to be a need for speed cameras something we have discussed with with police uh, and as part of the project it's something that we we will be monitoring and we may uh, consider if this is going to be needed but like i mentioned uh, the the layout the environment we are sort of uh, proposing um will sort of um be be um a self enforcing uh, layout if, if you like because we are reducing that space, um, so that that will definitely help towards that. Thanks, Aga. And then um, Richard, this is this is one that came up on Wednesday uh, as well, so it's probably worth just uh, restating your answer around um, the the proposed um, uh, closure uh, for the entrance to to uh, the southern entrance to St Andrews Road. Um, that's obviously part of the the proposal for vehicles. Um, is there any opportunity to trial or progress the plan um, effectively quicker than the implementation process? I think the, the, the question is, is that something that could be trialled sooner rather than later is the question. I, th I think we, ne we need to um, conclude our work on, on the, the traffic impact, you know, the modelling and the assessment um, of that before we could bring that uh, that forward. Um, but there's a we've we've all you know we've set out a lot of a lot of projects here, um, and then we'll have to when it comes to the implementation we'll have to think about you know uh, the order of those, and that's certainly something that you know could, could be done relatively quickly I think once we've got the design settled. But I don't think we'd necessarily be looking at doing that um, in in isolation at this time. And and, and Richard, just whilst I've got you there, this is a question that hasn't come up yet is about how long how long it, if the project uh, you know pr proceeds in the sort of way that you anticipate and you start implementation in 2023, how long is it how long is it going to take? And um, how, how do you how yeah how how will any disruption to to the town be mitigated? I can maybe. Or yeah, Aga, yeah, please. Yeah. yeah. So it's something that we are looking at at the moment. We are sort of looking at uh, the, the traffic management and the impact um, and subject to the outcome of that discussion, we are looking at different options, different ways of implementing. And that will then in turn dictate how we may stage uh, the project is something we are working on. Um, with uh with with a contractor sort of uh trying to understand uh different different ways it's 
it's something that we are actually looking at uh, right now as, as we speak. So it's, it's an ongoing discussion and um, we will definitely be looking to obviously minimize the impact. Um, we, we are sort of, we are aware it's a key route um, and obviously naturally you, you, as, you, as you would expect it, you know, it's not gonna be a quick exercise. Um, and we are considering different options, whether to sort of uh, compact the works or spread them. Um, like I said, depend, depending on the outcomes of those discussions. So at this stage, it's, it's difficult to, to tell. Uh, I, I would I would be nervous to sort of uh, put numbers to that, but uh, I can just uh, assure you that it's something we are carefully thinking of. Um, and and we, we would want to obviously I'm at minimizing uh, the disruptions. So um, as soon sort of as, as we uh, have sort of more information, we will be able to give more details on that. Thanks, Aga. We're coming to the uh, to the end of this. So let's let's have quick fire uh, responses from uh, members of the team, please. Um, uh, just a question uh, here about street furniture in particular. Uh, so one for you, Tim, just a very quick answer. Uh, a yep. correspondent has said that the, the proposals um, uh, in the public spaces uh, for the street furniture are, are in their view, uh, ugly. Um, what is wrong with wooden traditional benches, which are uh, more in keeping with the, the sort of inheritance traditional materials of the town? Why can't we just have traditional wooden benches in these spaces? Um, I, I suppose these are uh, a new take. The approach is to have a new take on those kind of old, the, the, the older style of benches to make them kind of They'd be more accessible. They'd be more usable. Um, in in terms of the slab slab armrests, slab backrests, um, and we would always try and aim to have a, a variety of seating op options for different abilities of people. Um, yeah, and 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 it's just the the materiality would be about using sustainable materials. Um, it'll be about um, yeah ha having materials that weather weather appropriately within the space and age with the space. Um, we we. The actual fi finalising the materiality of the space is still work to be done. What you see here is kind of the uh, the organisation of space. So yeah, that's still to be developed. What you see here is kind of an arrangement rather than a final product. Great, thank you. Uh, another a, a question in a, a quick fire response to this one, Tim or, or Richard, you can you can take this. What's going to happen to the taxi rank outside the station uh, that currently exists? I'll I'll maybe take that, Tim. Yeah. Um, so that's that's relocate, relocated. So um, just slightly to the east. So so just you know a handful of meters away. So there'll be um, uh, well, actually that's that there'll be a drop off and pickup point there just to the east. So that it'll be able to be used by taxis, um, but it will also be able to be used by you know anybody else who's dropping people off at the at the station. There's also a black cab uh, rank um, opposite the station uh, currently, and then we're looking to sort of improve uh, the visibility and accessibility of that as well. Okay, great. There's so there, in the, in the submitted questions uh, at the moment. There 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 are more contributions that. We can of course pick up and, uh, and and include as part of the feedback from this particular session. So I'm just going to quickly go to any questions left in the chat. Who's going to pay for the maintenance of all these planters to stop them from becoming wildlife gardens? Yeah, we we, we have made you know maintenance sort of programs as it, as it stands so that this would you know get incorporated into that. Um, and and the the type of planting needs careful consideration. You can you can choose schemes that that reduce that 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 burden of maintenance. Um, but we want to make a an, an attractive and, and, and green town centre and, and, and maintaining that is part of that. And just a just a quick question because we haven't covered this. Somebody put into the, the chat how, how is this going to improve disabled uh, access? So uh, you know what 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 measures are being made to make sure that um, people with mobility issues, visual issues, you know, impairment issues are able to travel around the the town centre in a, in a comfortable and safe manner. Yeah, sure. So we're 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 duty bound by kind of British standards and design codes to design spaces that are accessible environments. So that would be a matter of course. As I mentioned, like with the furniture, materiality is still to be developed, but we'd make sure that it was kind of um, flush, easy to use spaces, no lumps, no bumps, no trip hazards. Um, making sure that uh, there's uh, sufficient um, difference in tonal values, so people can perceive changes in environments as they move through if they're hard hard of sight. But yeah, that's part of the detail, the detailed design development of the spaces, which would definitely adhere to those principles. Uh, and I'd just add, we've got a, um, you know, equalities impact assessment. I think we've got the, the latest version 
um, published on the web page. So that's, uh, you know, considering issues of equality is an iterative process that continues throughout the design. So that document will, you know, will, will get updated. Um, but, uh, you know, in addition to that and what Tim said, we're also looking at, um, you know, incorporating a whole series of, um, of new um, formal disabled um, blue badge bays as well um, throughout the, you know, throughout the town centre. Okay, great. I did see one hand up. It might have gone down, but it was West End, uh, West End Mork and Big Local. Um, I don't know if that that hand is uh, is 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 still there, but West End Mork and Big Local. I'm happy to uh, bring you on. Yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, you have the floor if you unmute yourself. Hi. Uh, sorry, it was a really. It was just to apologise because I just realised after sending a, a question to. Um... Uh, to Richard Eason privately that I'd used my Morecambe West End project Zoom. So I thought you'd be a bit confused why Morecambe is inquiring about Enfield. So it was just to apologise, but I'd sent a message to a private message to Richard. So. Okay. okay. Okay, I'll try and work. I can't see that, so but I'll, I'm sure I'll, I can. Um, right. Do you want to talk? Okay. You, you, yeah. I have that question uh, noted, so I will pass that on to you. All right, great. Well, I think then I'm going to bring... Um, proceedings to a conclusion there's lots of different contributions into the chat that that should be picked up after this so um definitely um yeah uh, liz and liz and co i'm sure we can pick these these contributions up and make sure that something's published um on the let's talk enfield town uh, website to to mop up anything that hasn't been covered in this session so um i'd just like to say thank you very much to everybody that's joined us uh, this morning thank you for your questions for your, your comments. Thank you very much to the panellists as well for, for your time as well. And um, I'd encourage people to, to get themselves onto the uh, website and um, view the report, view the proposals, view the slides, and um, feel free to get in touch with your comments. Thank you very much. That, Have a good sorry, day. Can I, sorry, Ali, can I just add on that, uh, the comment about disabled access, if I was going to say just that, if there's any specific comments or concern, Please, you know, we encourage you to get in touch uh, on the email that um, you received the notification from that Liz mentioned. Uh, we obviously welcome any comments and specific suggestions. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, and I, I'm just concerned that I can't see this private message. So, so do um, We've got do it. get We've in got touch it. with me. You've someone's got it. I think great. Um, okay, fine. That's fine. Great. Right, okay. Any last contributions from the panel before we uh, before we wrap up? No, we're all good. Okay, superstar. Thanks, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.